Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Greenside Up. Today we're talking about squashes and pumpkins. Now, long been a favourite of mine and just a couple of weeks ago or maybe about a week ago I was doing the melons and tomatoes video and I was showing you how to bury the vines of the, the melons and how to spread them out and, and how, telling you about how they grew. And a couple of questions were asked, um, do you do the same thing with your squashes? And I didn't actually answer, but I'm going to answer now and I'm going to show you exactly how I grow these. These are butternut squashes, they're not pumpkins. I have got a pumpkin to put in somewhere when I, I clear a bed. Um, it's growing on in a pot now. Um, but you can see these, there's only three pumpkin plants in here, um, sorry, squash plants in here. Um, they're now going to start to eat me out of house and home if I don't start maintaining them and looking after them. And the idea with these is that I twist them around, you can see these four canes hopefully around this one plant. And the idea is to train the vine around it and do the same here and the same with that one. But first we need to do a little bit of clearing. So I've got a line of beetroot there and that was grown there intentionally because as that grows it provides a little bit of shelter uh, for squashes and pumpkins and in the early stages certainly of the life it's good to have that um, early wind break because wind if you get a strong wind say like in uh, towards the end of April or into May it can really ravage um, a pumpkin and squash plants they're not you know the big leaves the sails and they can rip them to, p to pieces so that bit of protection is done now uh, we've got a harvest there so I'm going to take them out and then we'll get down to sorting these squashes out and I'll give you a few hints and tips um, on growing them because I got those hints and tips from the bigger growers when I used to grow giant bumpkin, uh, bumpkins, giant pumpkins <laughs> many years ago. I've never tried to grow a giant pumpkin, but giant pumpkins years ago, I've got a few hints and tips for that. So we'll crack on with that now and get this uh, beetroot out. <laughs> bumpkins. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pull this beetroot. I'm just gonna hook it all out and uh, I'll clean it all up afterwards. Never thought it would be so hard. I grew up without a scar Just living my life with no big worries And I've always known what I want Just didn't know what came along Finding myself a much less happy Back in the days I used to dream about one day A life so amazing not everyone judging me Don't wanna care about them Though it hurts so bad I wanna stay wide open Cause if I shut down It just gives them right I wanna stay wide Okay, so that beetroot came out nice and easy. Got a great crop there, but that's not the object of today. So now we've got these three butternut squash plants. I've just pulled this vine out of the way, just so you can see that that is all one plant there. This one is the biggest by far. And again, that's all one plant. And this little fella down here all on his own, Billy No Mates. There you go. <laughs> So you can see that there's three plants all on their own and that's ideally what we want and what we have is the plant was planted right in the middle so the crown is right in there so i zoom out and you can see hopefully the four canes around it and the main vine has come out from there and gone around there around this cane and along here so this is the main vine so we've got that circular, almost a helix fashion going on. And this main vine will continue growing and they can grow 20 foot long. They might not, they might not grow that long, but they can easily grow 20 foot long. Now, along that main vine, there's a, there is a pattern of, and you can see the stuff down here, you get one of these 
uh, tassel things here which will tie itself so it can scramble. You'll get a leaf and you'll get a flower which is that thing there, that's the little flower, that's a male flower that one. And also this thing here is another, this thing here is another side shoot. So there's the tassel, the leaf, the flower there and the side shoot. Now that side shoot, when that grows out, if it's allowed to grow out, it will grow to be a mini me of that main vine. It will be exactly the same. And every leaf joint along this main vine has the potential to do that. Now when they come out of the main vine, they're called secondaries. Now each one of those secondaries or second vines can grow out and they can feasibly grow as long as the main vine. So you can have multiple vines of massive length. Out of those second vines, because it's a mini me of the main vine, you can also have the same scenario as I was just showing you down here, the tassel, the leaf, the side shoot and the flower on every, on every leaf juncture on the secondary vine and you can get third vines coming up and they're called tertiaries. So you can see very quickly, especially if we get a run of good weather, which at the moment it is. I mean, I've come down early to record this because it's very, very warm at the daytime today. Um, so we've got to start limiting it somewhere. And where I go to is straight to the second vines. I will allow second vines to grow, but the tertiaries I all take off. So in here, these vines, that are coming off here, sorry, these vines that are coming off here, these are secondary vines coming off the main vine that is growing around here. I will allow them to grow and I will allow the flowers to grow, but these little side shoots, I can either take them off now or wait till they form and I can see them clearer and get a cleaner cut and I will remove them then. Otherwise, this one plant could easily fill this whole bed and we don't really want that and we don't want to put too much of a strain on the plants we want to get maximum yield from a plant to get a good crop we don't want to produce continually producing more and more green matter more and more of this leaf matter because even on the third vines you'll get fourth fifth sixth it'll just keep going as long as the weather and the conditions allow it to. So we have to stop it and it's better to stop them after the second vine. Now, you can see the main vine comes out from that main part and around this cane and it's coming down around here. Now I will train this around this vine uh, cane over to this one and back round. And I will keep training it round that big square to keep it in a confined area. The secondary vines I will allow to grow inside that circle. And when the area is full of growth, that's when I start to stop vines. I will cut the ends off. So this end here, once that's full of green leaf, you're not serving any more purpose um, for the plant. You've got the maximum amount of green leaf for photosynthesis to produce your fruits. Now, your fruits, are here, yeah, there's one down here. So here is one butternut, butternut squash fruit. And that's growing away happily. Now also from where I've said you get the leaf, you get the tassel, you get the flower and you get the stem, you will also get a root. And it's important or it's beneficial to allow that to root. Let me see if I can show you. So there we are, here's the flower, and here's the leaf, here's the tassel. Just down in here is the side shoot, I'm just moving it there. And at the bottom there is the root. That will go into this soil and it will help take up more nutrients. Look at the length of that. So that's why I was saying about the melons, that we cover that 
in compost with melons it's much easier because the stems are a lot thinner but with pumpkins especially the larger pumpkins and with squashes there's a little trick to keep it down and that's to cross some canes into the soil and that will hold it down so there we go and then just pull some compost over it that will then root and you'll get a better crop for it now when you're at this stage you really want to be clear of weed in this bed in the bed where you're growing it clear any out doesn't matter how small it is clear them out because once and in a couple of weeks this area will probably be full of this leaf and we won't be able to get at the soil but obviously if the weeds grow they're taking nutrients and water away from the plants and as your squashes or pumpkins are about 95 percent water you don't want that to happen and <coughs> excuse me and you also don't want to go in here with a hoe because in a couple of weeks time all this soil in here will be full of tiny really tiny white feeder roots and they will come to a millimetre below the surface of the soil so you don't want to go in there with a hoe because you'll be breaking them off you want to gently tease any weeds you see out with your fingers only and just gently pull them so you need to get them when they're small so that you can you can do that without having to dig them out so don't let that get on top of you now i say back when i was growing giant pumpkins if i were growing them in this bed there would have been one plant in here and what i would have done is in the autumn i would have sown a green manure um, something like a vetch and ryegrass mix let it grow over the winter get several cuts for the compost heap and then about four weeks before i was ready to plant i would have dug the portion portion of this soil over where the plant was going and so let's say where that squash is i would have dug that over and allowed the rest of it to carry on growing as the plant progressed i would have dug more in because it's feeding your plants as it goes and holding on to moisture. It's also extracting nitrogen from the, from the air um, to help feed your plants as well. And to a certain extent as well, holding on to moisture. So that was the other thing we used to do. Now, when you're feeding and watering, because of these roots that we've just crisscrossed into the ground there, you want to feed the whole ground because as I say all this will be full of white roots within a certainly by the end of July so make sure you feed the whole area so there we go I mean I'll come back to this bed and I'll show you what I'm doing I'll try to show you through the year hopefully you've got a good handle on it and uh, I wish you luck with your pumpkin growing but one more thing also I should say your fruit which is this little fella here. If you can, there are a couple of recommendations out there for how to look after the fruit as they're growing. Some will say to put it on straw. I don't like that idea because just simply doing this here with my finger and fingernail will put a tiny scratch in it. As this fruit grows, so does the scratch and eventually it can end up as a, a big unsightly mark on it or worse than that, it can actually split and rot. So always treat your fruit with kid gloves if you can. Don't put them on straw. So your, your fruit, your, your, your squashes or your pumpkins, if you can, put them on a slate or on a bit of polystyrene. That's how I always did it when, when I was growing the giants. So that's a good little handy, useful tip for you. Right, so that's it now. These three plants are now sorted out for now on a weekly basis or maybe even every two or three days I'll be back at these plants pruning out the tertiaries that I don't want making sure I'm training them and pegging them down like this to make sure they go in the direction I want them to go so um, keeping them under control and as I say taking out any of the weeds they just want a damn good water now in here and then I'm going to start feeding them this week and it'll be a comfy feed all the way for me with these plants. Works wonders. 
so there we go i hope you enjoyed that and um, and i hope you get some monster squashes <laughs> take care look after yourselves turn on now